Badass Attitudes, licensed here. A podcast for successful badassery with Kelly Orchard. Certifying badasses, one podcast at a time. That's right. Kelly Orchard, the badass certifier here with you. Oh, how's it going? All right. I, you know, it's been it's been quite a month for me, I'll be honest with you. And um, I've shared a little bit here and there on the podcast for Successful Badassery. But today we're talking about leadership and music. That's right. Leadership and music. You know, I dedicated the entire month of March to leadership, both on the at Kelly Orchard's Apple a Day podcast and with radio and with this podcast um i usually kind of do that in march it's a good springtime or pre-spring sort of sort of topic um but what i what i i think is what's really more important is everybody's mental health honestly and that is you know that's what i focus on on a daily basis so i do have some things for you on leadership for the podcast today you know we i go through the acronym of my of the badass program and and some people are still a little confused about it you know because badass does not mean that you're angry or curmudgeony or harsh in any way a badass attitude in today's urban society means somebody that is cool calm uh, re- resistant to the stresses that automatically come at us. But that doesn't necessarily always mean that your attitude doesn't need to be adjusted. And I've had to take a step back. I guess you could call it for an attitude adjustment, but just kind of to, to just under you know step back and realize that some things I'm just not capable of doing right now. Um, you know, as most of you know, well, if, if you're listening to my podcast or you pay attention to anything uh, I do on social media, you know that I've got my parents that I'm caregiving for and they're living with me. And so, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I feel like the people say, he's like, man, you got a lot of balls in the air. Well, yeah, I, ha- I do. Um, but I, I, I practice my badass tools. So I do have some balance, but that doesn't mean that some things aren't overwhelming. And, um, and so th- some things have gotten pretty overwhelming and I've had to kind of step back on some of the things I was working on and put them aside. And I shared that, I shared that with you, I think it was last week. Um, but now it's, it's more like, yeah, I had a lot of balls in the air and some of those balls have actually fallen to the ground and I have to leave them there for a while because I've got this whole circus going on in my, in my world and I'm the ringmaster, but I'm not only the ringmaster, I'm every single performer in my circus. So this is me just being completely authentic with you. And this is my self-awareness. Um, and, and I, you know, I was... I was doing my normal, my, my usual self-care routine last, you know, in the evening last night. And, you know, one of the things that I do is, is I have a nice little backyard patio that I, I just like to go out and sit in and yeah, I burn some sage and, and I, I pray and I listen to music and I, I just kind of clear the, the muck of the day, I call it, uh, the sage, I discovered the sage burning, uh, in, you know, in Sedona a couple of years ago, and it's become sort of a regular ritual with me because the smell now reminds me of my, my peaceful times in Sedona. So it's, so there's that whole, that, that memory that I'm triggering. And then of course, being outside under the stars, you know, reminds me of also being out in Sedona, you know, I may be living in the city, but I can imagine, I can visualize, I can, I can focus, I can, I can reduce the stress and the anxiety of the day with my nighttime routine routine when I use music and then I burn the sage it helps me get back into that moment in time that felt really good and peaceful and healing for me and so I teach this to my clients and I share the about this practice on the podcast because when life gets so overwhelming that you feel like you're about to break you really need to allow yourself to to have those moments of grief bursts. And this is another thing that I always remind clients that are g- grieving. And, you know, we grieve a lot of stuff, uh, you know, and not, not just the death of somebody. But speaking of that, you know, we come, it's like lately I've had a lot of reason to, to share about my, my two brothers who have passed on. And then also people realize that I'm, I'm looking straight into the, the, uh, the tunnel of that my parents are going to be going soon, uh, you know, hopefully not real soon. But, you know, I mean, they're with me for a reason, right? And these things that are going on in their, in their health are, are happening because of aging. 
And so it is literally, come on, be real, all a matter of time until I'm going to be grieving again. And so some of you who keep coming back to the podcast are literally on the ride with me. And I, and I appreciate you so much for sharing the podcast, listening to the podcast, commenting on the podcast, because it is for you. I don't, I don't, this is not a self care thing for me. Well, it is in a way because, you know, it's, it's more about the being able to communicate and, ha- and having my voice in a platform and then the artistic value of adding, you know, Bobby Ocean in and some music in and some, you know, some pictures and, and it's creative. It's, it is a creative outlet for me, but I love to share it with you. You know, and one of the things that I have been coming to realize is that I teach a lot. Um, but, you know, and, I, and I've talked about this in earlier podcasts about, you know, my, my greatest skill. I did one of those, you know, what is your greatest skill or your greatest strength? Biggest, and mine is a learner. I love to learn, which is what makes me a really good therapist is I love to learn about my clients, you know, and their lives and what makes them tick. And that's what's really helpful. I love to learn. And so a while ago, a couple of years ago, I realized I was learning so much, I needed to flip that and begin teaching it. So I've been teaching for quite some time, teaching about how to live a badass life, you know, by using the acronym to be yourself and to have a positive attitude and to decide to grow and succeed, to practice awareness of your emotions and steadfastly stay the course to live successfully badass. Did you realize I just went through the whole acronym and that's pretty much what it means. And then I provide you with the tools that you need for each one of those letters. Well, I've been teaching that. And some of the things that I have been coming upon in the past month of March is I realize, ooh, I've got some learning to do. I'm not an expert in senior care. I'm not an expert in in all of the ins and outs that go along with the aging population. However, I have been learning about it for quite some time. It is the it is kind of the world that I work in with grief and depression and anxiety here at you know in my psychotherapy practice. And so now I've got my elderly parents living with me and I'm getting quite an education. I am. And I realize I have a lot to learn. And so I'll also a lot more to learn in my, my spiritual practices because, you know, if you don't have something like that in your life, what are you relying upon? What are you leaning on? What, is you, what are you basing your hope for the future on? Is it just sheer willpower? Is it just sheer mental power? You know, there's a whole connection of the mind, body, spirit. We, th- th- when they are in coherence, you will find peace and you will find success and you will find abundance. This is like, a, it is the law of attraction, but let's just look at, let's just, you know, like, I want to, I want to take that back a minute. This isn't a law of attraction to wish yourself a bicycle that's going to be appear at your door. This is a law of attraction where positive energy develops more positive energy. Negative energy creates more negative energy. So, so, and I have learned that like, just like gravity, negativity is much easier to do, but much more exhausting. Whereas positive energy takes a little bit of mental and emotional work to create a positive attitude, positive mindset, positive feelings and emotions takes a little bit more work and effort but not as much energy and, and it creates energy and it builds more positive energy. So the question really is, is on the D in badass, you get to decide, do you want to, do you want to practice more positive energy and mood and attitude or do you want to be on the negative side? It really, I'm sorry, but it really is that simple. You make a decision. Now, if you're, if you're in a state where you, you need medications, you know, like to help you with, with some of the symptoms that you're having, by all means, let's talk about that. But if it's just a matter of you got to shift your mindset, change your perspective and cr- gather some new tools. Well, thank you for showing up here for the podcast for Successful Badassery. I've got them for you. So let us begin. So as I was saying, last night I was out doing one of my regular practices and I just had a grief burst and it was, and, and as I'm, as I'm, I'm literally, I'm crying. I'm, I'm having kind of an episode of grief. And the reason is, is because the, cho- the song that I chose is one that was one of my brother's favorite songs. And it was the song that we played in the hospital when we pulled life support after his stroke coming up on seven years ago. Yeah, it'll be seven years ago this August. And and this is my brother Brad that I'm speaking about, and his favorite song. He could play it on the piano. He, it, it, you know, it was "How Great Thou Art." It doesn't matter the artist; it's the song itself. And every time I hear that song, I remember that moment 
in the hospital. I remember my brother playing this song on the piano. I remember hearing it at church. I rem- I have memories of my mom singing it. You know, so I go back to some family grief. But you know, when we're grieving, it's not a it's not about hiding it or getting over it or being done with it. That you can have grief bursts at any time. And honestly, to tell you the truth, if you cry and if you let your body sob, and you know what I mean, you let your body shake and sob it out, it is very healing and your body does need it. And so does your heart and your mind. So I gave myself permission last night to have that meaningful moment with my brother with that song. And that's why I share that music is such a great healer. So I do have an article for you that I found in Mind Body Green, okay, about three ways to use music to calm anxiety. And this is from a neurologist, and it's written by uh, Jason Wakeup. I hope that I said his name wrong. He's the founder and CEO of Mind Body Green, and this was coming back from just a couple of weeks ago. Now, they were predicting at the time that science around, you know, the science of sound, or called psychoacoustics, uh, we're, we'll take the place of well-being space by storm in 2022 the in wellness trends, you know, but sound healing has actually been around for centuries. So what the thing you need to do is dedicate time for music therapy. That is what I did last night. And you may think that this is a repeat, but I it's so important. When we have these busy lives and we have so many stresses that come upon us, and I shared this, I share this with clients all the time. You've got to have some sort of time for yourself to change the mood, to change your mindset. You know, I used to talk about it's like when you walk into your house after work, change your shoes. You know, and and, and I meant that in a figuratively or a metaphorical sense. Is that you're no longer in the business community, you're no longer working, you're no longer in in work mode. You need to get into home mode, regardless of what your home is, whether it's the the spouse and the kids, or you live alone, or you know, like me, you're taking care of your aging parents. You've got to switch your mind and switch gears. And of who you are. And then in the evening time before bed, you know, I, I personally cannot watch television at night anymore. I can't watch television programs, especially if there's any kind of violence in them or, or harsh words or yelling. It, I, my, my body and my brain is too sensitive to that now. So getting out in my backyard and listening to some music, whew, it does everything. I schedule it. I make time for it. I dedicate time for music therapy. After just 30 minutes a day, your brain will start to shift and the the executive functioning will improve and anxiety and depression are reduced. Another thing that you could do is opt for classical music or even ancient mantras. I have learned, you know, in some of my practices going to Sedona and having, you know, some of those massage and treatments work done, those are the, that's the kind of music they play. And And, you know, even in when you go get a massage anywhere, um, they'll play some of those tantric relaxing music. There is a reason for it. Our bodies respond to the frequency and the vibration of those music. And so each culture um, and tradition has its own version of classical music. Some of the ancient musical traditions were extremely mathematical. And from that, from the way that they were chanted to the tone, everything had a specific rule to it. And so you could do that, and within 20 minutes, you'll notice a reduction in your anxiety. And then stick to uplifting songs. You know, I tell you about, I've told you about How Great Thou Art, making me sad, you know, in my grief, but it is an uplifting song when you listen, when you think about it. But, you know, I, I talk about the badass soundtrack, and, and, and basically what, I've, what I teach you to do is to attach a song to a happy memory, and that is that would be a, an uplifting song. So that if the song is meaningful to you, it will change your emotions. And so and the, so the takeaway is that music can be soothing and uplifting, but it's not all about entertainment. It sparks an emotional response, which can certainly have an effect on your mental health. Now, I still want to talk to you about some leadership as well. So listen to this. Okay, so there are 12 leaders or 12 behaviors that leaders should avoid. And as we wrap up my leadership summit for March, I wanted to share 12 rules for leaders. Uh, I got this from Smart Brief on Leadership, and I will put the link in the show notes for this article. You know, last fall, 
this art the the author um had somebody reach out to them in charge of change initiative at his company and asked the, if uh, they could identify a number of behaviors that leaders should avoid at all costs and i love this so um, here we, you know, we tell our brains what not to do. It may, you know, it may do what we don't want in absence of clear directions or the corrective course of action. So here we go. 12 behaviors that leaders should avoid along with ideas for what to do instead. And this can be leader in your home, leader in your business, leader with your club or organization. All right. Don't invite input. Yeah. People should just do their jobs. You shouldn't ask if there is a better way of doing what they should do already know how to do. All right. So what to do instead? Ask for input. People who actually perform the tasks may have ideas of what works well and what doesn't. Allowing people to make contributions will enhance performance and results. All right. Don't communicate clearly. Give your directions and let it be that. People should know what they what you mean when you tell them what to do. Also, don't allow questions, expression of concerns, or ideas for improvements along the way. What to do instead. You should do all you can to communicate clearly and distinctly. If you have any doubts, ask questions to clarify and check your understanding and theirs. Don't invite people to identify what they need. If you're always asking people to identify what they need, time, people, equipment, or more money, you run the risk of giving them an inch and them taking a mile. What to do instead? Offer support along the way. Identify what is working and where people are getting bogged down. Make any needed adjustments that will help with the completion of a project. Four, don't express appreciation. After all, you pay people for doing their jobs. Why should you verbally recognize them and express appreciation for what they're supposed to do? <laughs> what to do instead? Smart leaders go out of their way to observe people and catch them doing the right things. They step up and express appreciation for the work people do and value and contribution that they make. You see how we said express appreciation? You know, if you have a good thing going on at your business environment or your club or your whatever, your your church, your sports team, and you ha you want to express appreciation, this is a great time to find a song that represents that what you're appreciating. You know, and then guess what? You do something that with your with your team and you play that song, they will always remember that and then that song will always remind them of how you appreciated them and the work that they did. Imagine that for your badass soundtrack and what that would do for your team. All right, don't take the time to get to know your people personally. Get to know someone on a personal level is not necessary. You're better off keeping to yourself than wasting time talking with people about non-work topics. What to do instead? People want to connect and know their leaders. Getting to know each person on your team, their history, their goals, and their aspirations will help you establish rapport and make personal connections. People generally want to know coworkers care about them and respect them from their con for their contributions to the team's success. Don't jump in and assist when things don't go as planned. You don't have time to worry about how people are doing at their work. They'll figure it out. If they don't get good results, you can always blame them. Stay out of the way and let them work things out on their own. Oh my gosh, how many times have you experienced that? So what to do instead? Being involved when assistance is needed demonstrates commitment and teamwork toward the goal team goal. You should never be afraid to offer suggestions, share your expertise, or backfill when there are not enough hands to do the work. Offering support when it is needed will demonstrate your commitment to people's success. Now, here's some other things that, uh, things that leaders should not do. Don't trust people to do their jobs. Don't offer feedback, especially when desired results aren't achieved. Don't worry about throwing people under the bus. Don't take time to celebrate successes. Don't worry about developmental opportunities. And don't worry about saying one thing and doing another. All right. These are the 12 things that a leader should never do. 12 rules for a leader. And I'm going to put the, uh, the link in the show notes in case you want to know the details of all the other ones. But uh, I wanted to be able to share with you uh, today that I love doing this podcast 
I do. And I'm going to get back to doing it off, obviously much, much more. You know, I just, I, you know, it's, it, it, my life is dealt with in extremes. And I, I, I share this all the time. It's like, man, when something really bad is going on, something really good happens and vice versa. And I've got so many examples of it. And right now, what is it? what it is, is that, you know, that my daughter just had a baby in Texas. And I've got ongoing uh, development issues at home with I mean, aging parents, generational, you bet. Yeah, I am of the sandwich generation. I've got kids who are adult children who are having grandchildren, and I've got aging parents that need my care, my attention. So it's pretty extreme for me. And I am leaving in a couple of weeks to go spend a month in Texas. And I'm working on the way that I can continue to keep this podcast going so that I can I can share with you what's happening with me in Texas. But if I don't, well, I'm not even going to put that out there. I'm not even going to put that out there in the universe and plant that seed. I am going to make sure that I have all of the components that I need to continue to do this podcast while I'm in Texas. So wish me luck. Meanwhile, you know, sharing about balance with you is so important too because, you know, we, we, we get so out of sync or out of balance with what we truly, truly need to survive and the world is not the same i'm having to share this with, primarily with my my clients who are younger um in the in their youthful years this is not normal what is going on in our world none of it is normal and i don't know if it's ever going to go back to what was normal before and that means a lot of i've seen a lot of people yes change careers, quit their jobs, give up their their livelihoods and their homes to do something completely different, slow down, enjoy life one day at a time. And so I ter- I shared with you my evening routine, which is only that's just one of the things that I do. You know, I have several different kinds of routines that I do in the evening to help me um basically process and and finish up the day that I've just had, whatever whatever went on, I, I wrap it up and I prepare myself for a good night's sleep. Um, I'm, I practice mindset, you know, meditation, mindfulness, you know, and peace and understanding and I pray for love and light and all of that. And I, you know, I practice my faithful practices and I sleep well. I wake up early. I do. My body just gets me up and I look forward to my morning routine. And my morning routine consists of something completely different. And so I will share that with you on the next podcast because I got to give you a reason to come back. <laughs> so that is it for me on this. You know, I don't even know what day to, what to, to call it anymore. It is Wednesday when I'm recording it, but I realize that it doesn't need to be called Wednesday Wisdom. But this is Kelly Orchard's Badass Wisdom for you on today's podcast for successful badassery. Mr. Ocean, please take us out, will ya? When the bus arrives at Badassville, you discover it's not a place. It's a state of being. Snag your badass habits ebook. Get started on your badass journey. Go to licensedtobebadass.com. Hop on the bus to Badassville.